Hello everyone, thank you for coming back to my channel and uh, my name is Sean Toby and this is Promoting Safety Engineering and um, yeah, so today we're going to be talking about PNIDs, how to read them. I'm, I, I did a video on that a little while, uh, maybe sometime last year, but um, this is, I've been getting lots of um, comments about people want to see stuff more stuff on pnids and i was like okay i should i should do this so this is the channel uh where we talk about everything safety engineering process safety safety and risk and um of course if you like it uh please like uh like the video subscribe and yeah let's get down to it so today i'm going to be talking about um, how to read PNIDs and we're going to start from the very basic 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 uh, points and steps in the, that so we're going to be treating this PNID which is about uh, it's about uh, 20 something pages but I'm going to break it into short videos so that you will uh, get the full gist of it so i'll i'll try to break it down into as as make them as short chunks and short and powerful chunks as possible so that you kind of understand it and take it in step by step so i want to go from the very basics which is okay so you have a pnid a set of pnids which is like this long so you have so many pages and you're looking, where do I start? What do I do? How do I even understand what these people are talking about? Like, this is, just looks like jargons to me. So don't worry. I, I want to break it all down. It's not, it's, not, it's not rocket science. It's not, it's, it just takes you to, it takes just a bit of common sense and some practice for you to understand it. So, of course, starting out, you have your set of PNIDs. These have been dumped on you and you, you're supposed to kind of make sense out of this. Okay, so how do you do that? So there are a couple of things you, you, you want to have first. And that's what I want to explain in this first short video. I want to talk about four things. Firstly, your legend. Secondly, I want to talk about your PFD. That's, that's your process flow diagram. Then I'm going to talk about the title block which is i'll show you what the title block is this is your title block down here you wish you all kind of have an idea of what that is that's this and after apart from your title block then we want to talk about uh your process description now this is very key to understanding your process description everything i've mentioned they're all key so i'll just do short explanations on each one of them so firstly you get your set of of drawings and the first thing if you don't understand anything at all the first thing you should ask for are your pfds and your process description now your pfds i've done a video on how they are all related pfds pnids and and um, block flow diagram so a pfd is a process flow diagram this is like a pnid but it's a lot with a lot less detail so everything you see in all these pages like here like all these pages they are all they all show up in this pfd but what you have really are the major equipments like now you can see this v3 3020 vessel if you go to your pnids you would see it's uh this is it v3020 you can see e3020 you would see it somewhere here e3020 this is it here so and and this is that vessel so everything all major equipments in your pnids are to appear on your pfds not every single thing but a lot of major equipments so that when you just have or look at it at once you are not going page to page you can kind of have a holistic idea of what exactly is happening so you can see that and when you're reading most times it's going to go from left to right although sometimes you might see some funny arrows coming out of some odd funny places like this or like like maybe this like okay what exactly is happening but mainly you should kind of have an idea that it goes from left to right that's the first thing then have an idea of all the um the major equipments which are all this um 
vessels and heat exchangers you might have pumps you might have compressors like there's a pump down here then you come here okay you come to the top all these are still here but you just kind of have a whole a an idea of okay what exactly since i've said it's coming from left to right you have your gas from module so gas is coming in from here and when the gas comes in here okay what does the gas do does it go this way does it go this way okay you can see an arrow going this way so some some goes this way some goes this way you look at this now these are wells well 17t well 18t well 19t okay so these are all wells all these wells all feed into this line and from this line it feeds the only where this place this line feeds into is this vessel so everything all the wells go into this vessel and from this vessel some go into this this is a heat exchanger it could be and when we say a heat exchanger it just means it's either cooling it or it's making it hotter that's just it no special english here it's just either making the flow coming out of this either making it cooler or or hotter that means it's exchanging heat and the same thing you see some part of it goes out from here it comes in here and from here it goes in here and from here some goes this way and like that so you just have an idea of okay okay so this should be the first place this should be the first pn id maybe this is the second or second pn id this is the third pn id so with that you just go back to your drawing here and kind of okay so where does this start from i started from the flow lines the wells if you look now you can see the wells 17t 18t 19t 20t but when you see it like this everything looks so busy but what these things are just they're just lines all the way going here going here and from there you go to the second page and this is it it has come in here and from here you go into your heat exchanger 3020 if you go back to the pfd you can see this this is all the lines it has come into this it has come into your heat exchanger and from here this 3021 if you go back the thing is because it appears on the each one appears on the page it just looks like wow what's happening this v3021 if you come here you'll see it v3021 so from the heat exchanger it comes here so if you go back here you see okay so from this heat exchanger from this heat exchanger oh that's where it goes okay and that's how you just kind of use it to break down what is happening then also this coupled along with this the process description is a very it's very powerful it's what you just read and kind of have an idea like okay this is the gist of what this whole facility is about this is what they because you need to know the intention like all these p and ids why are we drawing them why are we passing this liquid and this gas and this stuff why are we passing it from stage to stage to stage why so you this kind of gives you oh so this is why we need to do this to the gas and this to the oil and this to the water and okay so that is why we are passing it through all these pumps and to do this to it this is what gives you kind of an explanation so ask for your process description this is the process description a snap a snapshot of it just a short part of the process of the process description for this so if you look at it with the pnids you don't even need the pnids just read it and try to understand it you may not get the full gist okay so i put my name here the toby non-associated gas facilities so when you hear non-associated gas it means the gas that just comes out um at dry associated gas means there's some liquid and fluid with it that's just what it means and non-associated means it doesn't have a lot um it's mainly like almost just gas alone it doesn't have a lot and they call it sometimes you hear nag what's the nag or what's the ag please it's it's um oil and gas jargons when you spend time in oil and gas you understand so you see that the facilities that is all these p and ids and drawings have been designed to process well streams you saw the streams from the well here so all these things have been designed to process these well streams from the gas reservoirs and what are the reservoirs the reservoirs are of course the on the um, where the gas comes from under the ground so it's been to process them 
the plant provides the capacity to deliver 120 million scoff. Million scoff is a way of measuring gas. is is a million. Um, is a way of measuring the um, that's a standard cubic feet of gas in accordance with specified dew points at the desired pressure for the power generation facilities at Penwell. So what does this tell you? This tells you that what this facility is doing is providing gas at this this amount of gas per day that's slash d in accordance with specified dew points that means you the dew points they you want the gas to come at a pressure and at a temperature for the power generation facility so what this whole thing is doing is it's taking the gas from the ground to because it is giving it to some power some turbines to produce power for maybe a city so you okay so uh, but the thing is those turbines they are very sensitive they don't want they don't want um gas that is that is maybe 50 they might tell you they want the gas at 70 point five degrees centigrade they want it very exact not 70 degrees not 71 degrees 70.5 so you find out that okay that's why they are cooling it and that's why they are heating it and that is why and they want it at a certain pressure at the desired pressure they might tell you the, the gas needs to hit those turbines at 40 bar or at 10 bar or at 2 bar so you have so many things just to make sure that the stream is constant at that temperature at that pressure so that the turbines in the gas facility can use it and for, so for power generation facilities at Penwell. so from economic evaluations of the reservoir and required equipment a system has been selected where for 30 million scoff so when you see 30 million scoff 120 so four trains are connected to an inlet manifold what's an inlet manifold that manifold is just a collection of pipes all these pipes the four of them are all connected to this pipe to to an inlet manifold and four well flow lines okay that those are the lines from the um the flow lines from for the world that's these are all the flow lines one two three four it all comes in so the manifold provides flexibility to connect well streams to ltx units as operations require so sometimes maybe based on this um, process flow diagram these lines you might want to line them up to go through another vessel you might be able to line them up to go through this vessel and not go through this vessel because of something that may be happening on the facility so you just have some flex flexibility to say okay maybe i don't want to flow this line i want to just flow this two and close this or close this alone and flow this two or maybe this has started bringing out a lot of oil instead of gas or it has started bringing out a lot of um a lot of maybe hydrates or dirt and you want to close it and you want so the, uh, there's some flexibility that it allows you to do in so the manifold provides flexibility to connect well streams to ltx units as operations require so provisions were made for the connection of future flow line and module that means they've made uh, some provision like maybe there might be some valves around here you might see it in the real p and ids that okay so um for future so let's say maybe they dig more wells and they need to uh, to have it connected to this okay so they've made some valve put some valves here to allow you connect some piping in the future then um the well stream from the reservoir must be reduced in pressure and liquids must be separated from the gas stream to a degree that satisfies the dew points that means this gas that we need at penwell at the generation facility we don't need it to have liquid and you know once you drop the pressure of gas it's some part of it will become liquid so because of course once gas is you 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 reduce the pressure some parts which is just normal physics will become liquid so of course we know that we want to reduce the pressure but the liquid must be separated from the gas stream because you don't want the gas that hits the um, generators to be to be wet you want the you want the gas to be as dry as possible and you want it to come at this pressure and you want it to come at this temperature so to, to a degree that satisfies the viewpoint of the outgoing gas hydrocarbon condensate and water are produced with the gas so that means when it comes out of the ground you it has a lot of hydro um, condensate and water 
that comes with the gas so the condensate is pumped into condensate discharge line after having been degassed at atmospheric pressure the gas means remove the gas from the condensates condensate are water and water are then disposed of so you can take a snapshot anything you don't understand here just google it and read it up but that's just the whole gist of what all everything here is doing just to get the gas at the best temperature, at the best pressure, at the best this for that facility. And the facilities, some facility might want it at 70 and some might want it at 5. It just depends on what um, the end point is. Okay, and then I said I was going to talk about the title block. So, okay, so this is your title block here. It's very necessary when reading a P and ID. Um, um, when reading PNIDs to have an idea of what's happening here. So, of course, this will contain the project name. I've blanked that out. The drawing title. This changes almost every page. The project, would be the, the project name will be the same. I can say two be social so facilities. But the drawing title changes the at, at each for each drawing because what is on each drawing is now a major equipment. So, it keeps on changing for each drawing. So this you can see LTX separator. This is the LTX separator, and this is classifier. This is classifier like that. So it keeps on changing, but the main project name would not change. Then you would have the name of the facility. That's where you are. Maybe Penwell facilities or Toby facilities. Then the drawing number. This is very critical in every PNID. You have to know those drawing numbers because all these arrows that you keep point. They are telling you that the continuation for this PNID for this line on this PNID goes to this page. The continuation for this line goes to this page. The con so you have to be able to see those lines and understand. Okay, this is where this line is coming from. This line, when you see this, it's coming from page 00019-001 when you see this it is going to page 0002-001 you have to understand those things so that when you are looking at it okay so this that means this line to find where it's coming from i just have to go to look for the pnid that has that number and if you go up this is if you go up this should the one before should be 19 yeah, can you see 000019? Because all these four lines all end up, or oh, sorry, five lines, they all end up here, just like in the PFD. So it all comes in from here. So that's why you can see 00019. And if you go to them, you will see that they are telling you that we are going to, okay, some, oh, it's not shown here. It's not showing, no. Oh, where are those lines going from? But everything here, there should be the line going to that page. Okay, going to 20. So you can see 0020 slash 0023, 20 slash 23. So that shows that this line, can you see this is also going to 20. So this, this, and this all go to this page 2, this second page here, 20. So when you look at those flags, and here it tells you the next place is going to and that's this and if you now you are confused about another like you are not too sure look at those lines look at this line number this is what you call a line number they are everywhere you see them here you see them here if you are not sure just go to the page it is going to and look at when you go to this page 22 you will see where this you will see this line number showing up there and like that that's how you keep on piecing it together and everything starts to make sense so i've described that the uh, process flow diagram some parts of the pnid your process description then and your title block yes so i mentioned this in the title block then of course it will have dates then of course you would have the names of the companies that set it up maybe toby engineering and um so 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 oil and gas company is the owner of this you have that all written here and logos and stuff then this is also very critical because this lets you know the revision like you might um see as i might do a video explaining revisions but it's pretty easy meaning okay when we started out this drawing this drawing might have started out as just this 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 and maybe just this equipment and a few lines then it will go through a revision your supervisor looks at it your lead looks at it your senior engineer looks at it and they say oh no we need a 
a pressure transmitter here or a temperature at least a pt pressure transmitter or a or a high high trip here or a level low here they'll start and gradually it gets more robust and gets starts making more sense so after you've issued the first one it goes around everyone looks at it and says okay this is good but then you come back and some people make some comments you come back because that the drawing is now changing you have to always capture it when things are changing and you are issuing it so you note it again it is going for hazard study um it is going it is issued for review it is issued for approval it's issued for construction and then of course all this is the name of the person who drew it the person who checked it the person who approved it the reference the date it was it went out so like that like that and then that's why you have all these clouds so once it wasn't in the drawing before you cloud it if you come here you see clouded area indicates new addition that's a note clouded area indicates new addition so you have to remember that every time you see a cloud that means in the drawing before this one this uh, this instrumentation this equipment they were not there that just means that before this pnid just had this this it had this drawing had anything you see in the cloud means it's new for this revision so that is also essential for you to know then i said i was going to talk a bit about legend so it's always good but by the time you've gone through two three legend sheets you should kind of generally get the gist and what's the legend sheets it's just showing you everything that's explaining everything that shows up in your pnids i have a video explaining those two explaining all this so you just okay so when i see this this means it's an ro when i see this it means it's an expander when i see this it means it's a reducer when i see this valve it means it's a gate valve when i see this valve it means it's a spring loaded valve. everything they all have their meanings and their uses it would do you a lot of good if you take time to go and study them like okay why do they use a removable spool not just what it is but why why is there is a, a spacer what is the use of this spade blind why why is it closed why is it open you need to know it is good and the funny thing is a little google search which go a long way why is there a man way here on this vessel because someone wants to go in and clean it and you need to open it once in a while to evacuate whatever dirt is inside understand why do you have a side glass because you want to know the level in the vessel you don't want to maybe someone right there needs something some sort of physical proof to show that maybe there is liquid in a vessel maybe a side glass okay why is the, okay what is this for it's an electric motor why is this using an electric motor instead of a diesel motor you know you just want to know try to but also you can't know everything in a day you need some time to actually um, that comes with experience you see all this you can see this is a reciprocating positive displacement pump this is a centrifugal pump this is a centrifugal pump this is one is submerged that means it's underground this is um this is just uh this is above ground you know there's so many equipments. This is a hand pump. That means it's not electric. This is a blowout, a fan. You just gradually soak in all those things with time. But then you need to do your own homework also so that you understand. So that once you just see, oh, uh, all these things are in the legend, all these instrumentation, high, high, low, lows, pressure transmitter, um, temperatures. You can see everything here. So you can see when you see PI, PDI, pressure differential indicator, PIT, pressure indicator transmitter, PI, pressure indicator, everything you see here. And you everything shows up. You will see all this level indicator, level switch low, level switch high. You see everything and all your instrumentation, your trip, your lows, your high, you will see it in the PNIDs. But once you have an idea of what it is here, don't be in a hurry. It is time so this looks really crowded but when you just start looking okay this is oh oh this is temperature gauge this is a pressure gauge oh this is an esd emergency shutdown pi pressure indicator we saw a pressure indicator tg temperature gauge oh pzza oh a pressure trip high high hh ll low low uh flow ft flow transmitter fi flow indicator 
like that it's now makes you now say okay so there's a we need on this line we need to know the pressure that's why there's a pressure valve here on this line we need to know the flow okay that's why there's a flow transmitter oh on this line something may happen and we need to shut down quickly that's why there's an emergency shut down on this line there's a closed valve Oh, why is there a closed valve? Meaning this line is not flowing. Once you see this, that is blacked out. Meaning we are not flowing through this through the, this way. Little things like that, you start understanding, understand. And sometimes there are errors. That's why you have revisions. Maybe this valve was not supposed to be closed. Because when you actually sit down and think about it, maybe we shouldn't close this valve. Maybe there will be a pressure buildup. Or maybe we will not be able to get the flow at so so place. Okay, maybe we need to open it up and then you do a new revision i hope i've not talked too much thank you very much everyone so um that's going forward uh, so i would now start breaking down the pianides from the next video but um yeah i would try to explain as much as possible and please like the video subscribe share the videos with anyone who's having who needs um this information and um yeah i'll go into the next um you can start from the next video i'll go into describing everything happening in the drawings in the pianides so thank you very much everyone once again this is Sean toby and uh, this is promoting safety engineering and thank you thank you for being with us